Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're screening for high beta stocks, and so Kevin Matris, their top screener over here at Zacks.com, is going to show us or tell us how to do that and tell us why we should be looking for high beta stocks at this particular time. Beta is about volatility, is that right? Yeah. Okay. You know, I've written about uh, low beta stocks here uh, in the past, and a lot of people like to look at low beta stocks because they typically have low volatility, uh, and people are kind of, you know, gravitating towards those types of stocks. But this week, I wanted to talk about high beta stocks because I find myself looking at a lot of these companies. So, first so those are stocks with high volatility? High volatility. Um, it, there, there's some interesting statistics, so let me show you what, uh, what my test showed, but let me first explain what beta is. Yeah. Beta is simply a measure of a stock's relative volatility or relative risk uh, to the market, and the market is defined as typically the S&P 500. Okay. So if, uh, if you have a beta of one, for instance, I have a slide here. Mm -hmm. If you have a beta of one, that means the stock's relative volatility uh, is equal to that of the market. If you have a beta of, let's say, greater than one, that means the stock's volatility is greater than the market. If you have a beta of less than one, that means the stock's volatility is less than the market. Okay. So, if let's say you had a beta of 1.5, mm -hmm. that means the stock should increase or at least should move one and a half times or 50% more than the market. Now, of course, if the market is going down, that means the stock is probably going to go down even more. However, if, in fact, the market is going up, that stock should move, should go up one and a half times or 50% more than the market. All right. But the market's been going sideways lately, and prior to that, it had been falling pretty much for a large part of the year. So right. why are we looking for stocks with high beta right now well, as good, we close out the year. It's a very good point. The market has been very volatile. Uh, and again, if you had only filled up your portfolio with, uh, with high beta stocks, yeah, you probably would have seen larger gains in the market. But, um, you know, there, there are some interesting things happening with these different beta stocks. So uh, let me see if I can show you a couple of things. Uh, I ran some tests with the research wizard. And the first tests I, I ran, I looked for companies with betas uh, half as much as the market. And then the other tests I did, I looked at companies with betas that uh, had a, had a co-movement or, or risk that is 50% that is, uh, more than the market. Mm -hmm. So when I originally ran these tests, I didn't see anything completely out of the ordinary. Uh, the high beta stocks did move more than the market. The low beta stocks moved less. But I didn't see the, the high beta stocks lose 50% more, and I didn't see the low beta stocks lose 50% less. But I did find some very interesting stuff, so check this out. Mm -hmm. When I ran these tests, the, the first results I saw was the high beta stocks using a one-week rebalancing period uh, between January 4th of 2008 and December 19th of 2008, those stocks lost 44.3%, while the market lost 36.7% for an excess loss of 7.6 percentage points. However, if you were to look at the low beta stocks, the low beta stocks lost 31.1%, versus the S&P's 36.7%, meaning it outperformed the S&P, or in other words, it lost less uh, by 8.4 percentage points. However, during the periods of 11.2108 through 12.1908, which was the period immediately following the market's low, the high beta stocks showed a compounded return of 32.1%, versus the S&P's 11.3, which is nearly tripling the market's return. Mm -hmm. And if you were to look at the low beta stocks, the low beta stocks show just a 9.4% return, just under the market's 11.3% performance. Now, I should say, too, that when I ran these tests, I applied all of the, uh, the parameters to stocks that were trading at $5 or higher that had an average uh, share volume of 50,000 shares or better. Now, True to form, uh, as I was saying before, the high beta stocks did show a greater movement uh, than the low beta stocks in both the up and down periods. 
But the reason why I'm focusing on the high beta stocks right now is because those stocks have been beaten down quite a bit. And those are the ones that are responding the most in this most recent, you know, period. Is there a way to find uh, stocks with the uh, uh, sideways beta for when the market is moving <laughs> sideways? <laughs> yeah, maybe you know, there's always a smart aleck right, in the right. crowd, right? I just put myself up as that person. <laughs> So the parameters. Let's go to the parameters for this screen. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty simple screen, but here they are. Uh, it starts off with price greater than or equals to five dollars. Okay. Average twenty day share volume of greater than or equals to fifty thousand shares. Okay. Uh, the Zacks rank has to be less than or equals to two. So again, only buys and strong buys mm -hmm. can get through. Mm -hmm. And then we follow it up with the beta. Uh, being greater than or equals to 1.5, which means 50% more movement than the market. And what old oracle of stock screening uh, came through that screen as an example that you want to leave with us today? You know, we had a bunch of stocks come through, so again, you're going to want to cull this list down by looking at the fundamentals that are attached to it. But one of the stocks that came through is a company called Valmont Industries, uh, ticker symbol VMI. They are in the industrial products and irrigation products business. Uh, the industrial product segment involves the manufacture and distribution of metal structures and other apps. Uh, the irrigation segment deals with manufacturing and distribution of agricultural irrigation products and other related equipment and this kind of thing. If you were to look at uh, the stats surrounding it, you can see they came into the week with a Zacks rank of a 1, which is a buy. Uh, after a 52% growth rate this year, they're expecting a 38% growth rate next year. They've got a strong ROE at 22%. They've increased their margins across the board, and they have a forward P.E. ratio, uh, which is close to being half as much as their five-year average. Now, if you were to look at a chart, you can see that they have a nice rounded bottom, and they are very close to breaking out to the upside. Stock looks very good. Do you own it? No, I don't. All right. We encourage you, as always, to look at a text version of Kevin's most recent screen, the one that he discusses with us here on Screen of the Week each week. And so if you're accessing this video outside of Zacks.com, all you need to do to view the current screen and an archive of, I think, the most recent four is go to Zacks.com. That's our homepage. Scroll down that homepage until you see Kevin's smiling face <laughs> and the headline right next to it. Click on it. It'll take you to the text version of the Screen of the Week with Kevin Matris. I'm Terry Ruffalo.